Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, we're going to be looking at 10 things that you can do when you're bored in Grand Theft Auto Online that nobody else does. So I'm making this video because I've seen a lot of posts recently saying they're already bored with all of the content from the Diamond Casino and Resort update and wondering when a new DLC is going to be coming out. Well, today I'll be showing you some fun things you can do to sort of pass the time a little bit. And if you enjoy this video and want to see me post more things that you can do with yourself or your friends when you're bored, let me know in the comments down below and also leave a like rating on this video. That would be amazing. But anyways, let's jump into it and let's get it started. Some of the things you can do today are awesome if you're by yourself. Some of the things are a bit more fun if you have some other players. The number one spot today, Stromberg skydiving. So this requires having an Avenger and the Stromberg, which is basically like the submarine car. So one of the cool features about the Avenger is that you can put it in autopilot mode. So if you were to example, load up your Stromberg in the back and then fly super high over a body of water like the ocean, you can actually put the Avenger in autopilot mode which will allow you to go and access the back. Now from there, you can do a handful of things like customize your vehicle, but you can also choose to abandon ship at any time. And it's pretty cool because the Stromberg, as you guys know, can go from car to submarine. So because of this, you can literally skydive out of the Avenger in the Stromberg and you can land safely in the water. And then you can do a couple of things. You can go exploring underwater, which is one of the cool untapped parts of the game, or you can return back to land and do whatever you want. It's really fun, especially if you're like super high up, you're just free falling for like 30 seconds or so. So that's pretty fun. That is Stromberg skydiving. The next is what I call grave digging. So in the Vinewood Cemetery, there's a few open graves. And if you were to take a vehicle with a big pickup in the back, like for example, the Cheval Picador, what you can actually do is sort of pick up NPCs in the back of your tailgate and then drop them off in the open grave. This is a fun challenge that I like to do, especially as we get closer to the Halloween season because it makes a little bit more sense to be in a spookier graveyard. So this is a lot of fun, again, by yourself. It's also great with a lot of people as you can try to get as many bodies in the grave as possible and just sort of stack them all up in there. It's a pretty fun challenge. It's really hilarious because it's kind of tough to get NPCs in the back of the pickup. Try it for yourself, it's a lot of fun. Definitely something that's fun to do by yourself is try to obey all the rules of the road and the traffic laws when you're driving. So not only is this a challenge because you know, you've probably just been so accustomed to blowing through red lights and going way over the speed limit, but try to follow all the rules of the road. And not only will this be a interesting challenge for you, but you'll also slow down a little bit and be able to pay attention to the world conversations that NPCs have on the street, weird driving things that they do. You'll find out that they are almost worse drivers than us. So just slow down, obey all the traffic laws. Not only is it, again, a really fun challenge, but you'll also find it that you'll probably discover a few more things about GTA 5 that you had never heard or seen before. Building off that at the number four spot, this is something I love to do in Grand Theft Auto Online, is be a driver. So whether this is picking up a taxi or something like a big bus, if you just go around to other players and gently honk your horn, sometimes they will get in the back of your vehicle as a passenger and you can take them from point A to point B. Now, sometimes they will not be as friendly. You will get shot in the face or have your car blown up, but that's to be expected with the populace of Los Santos. So don't take too offense to that. But again, it is pretty fun to basically just be like your own Uber service without the payday, of course, because you can essentially take a ton of people from point A to point B. It's a lot of fun. Some people will be appreciative. It could lead to some fun conversations or friendships that you might not have gathered before. And again, it's also a fun little challenge to see how much you can keep that going. The number five spot today, this one's kind of old school and retro, but with the addition of one of the new weapons, the Up and Atomizer, it's so much fun. You guys know that giant orange ball that's located on the top of that like stand, sort of uh, past the observatory? Well, the Up and Atomizer is like the perfect addition for this. You can basically use it to, to send it flying for the most part, and you can have a ton of fun with this giant orange ball. 
A lot of people in the past would either put it on the back of pickup trucks or tractors or just simply punch it and try and follow it around a hill. Well, with this new edition of the Up and Atomizer, you can send this thing flying and you can have a ton of fun with it. Again, it seems pretty old school and retro because it is. This is one of like the things that I saw on day one. But with that new edition of the Up and Atomizer, you surely can have an absolute ton of fun with this item. And if you were to also sort of get this in a strategical spot, you could almost use it as a bowling ball, knocking over either people or cars or whatever the case might be. Uh, anyways, let's move on. At the number six spot today, this is launching a Ruiner 2000 off of Mount Chiliad and seeing how far you can go. So as I'm sure you guys know, the Ruiner 2000 has a parachute and a jump option to it, which means that if you jump off Mount Chiliad and then immediately launch your parachute, you can end up going an insanely far distance if you're just able to glide. And one of the challenges that I've tried in the past is seeing if you can go all the way from the top of Mount Chiliad to actually going to the airport or even better yet, landing on someone's yacht, which is another challenge in and of itself because you've really only got one shot because if the Ruiner 2000 falls in the water, it's obviously toast. So that's a really fun challenge. It takes a long time to go from the top of Mount Chiliad to where you want to go because the floating process is so slow, but it is so much fun. And I'm sure if you were to do this in a lobby, a lot of other people would look around saying like, uh, what the heck is this guy trying to do? So it's a lot of fun. Definitely try it out for yourself. Another challenge that's a lot of fun at the number seven spot is seeing if you can use a yacht and the ramp buggy to launch a vehicle onto the yacht. So this is another fun challenge. It's kind of difficult, obviously, but you only get one shot at it because if you miss, your vehicle's going in the water and you've just lost your chance. So I've tried this in the past with the Rocket Voltic because of the booster it has on the back. I've also tried this with the Ruiner 2000 with some okay results. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. Trying to land on like the yacht helipad is such a small target. And when you combine it with the wackiness of the ramp buggy and the Rocket Voltic, it does get a lot of fun. So that's another challenge I would recommend trying out for yourself. And even if you don't have a yacht, maybe your friend does. Even if you don't have a ramp buggy, maybe someone in your crew does. So this is one that might be really good to do with friends. So anyways, let's move on though. At the number eight spot today, try to launch vehicles on to the lighthouse. So you guys know the lighthouse at the very top of the map. Uh, sort of in the Chumash grape seed area. Well, what we like to do as a giant group is launch cars off the ramp, seeing if you can actually get number one on top of the lighthouse platform, which is really tough. You have to be in a super light vehicle like a bike or have a car with a ramp to do that. Or for the normal vehicles, basically get them on that bottom platform. And again, this is another fun challenge because you've basically got one shot at this. If you miss short, wide, or long, your vehicle is going to end up in the water. Uh, I guess even if you do get it on there, it's going to get destroyed. But either way, it's still a lot of fun. This is definitely better with a lot of people because you'll start to collide as you hit the ramp. It just causes chaos and a whole lot more fun. So that is number eight today. Number nine today, try to invade the military base. So you can come up with sort of like your own objective, like you have to get to the top of the tower, then back down to the bottom of the tower and escape without getting killed. It's a lot of fun, especially because the military is obviously such a huge present in GTA Online. And the fact that it is going to create chaos instantly, like you're going to get four stars the second you leave the base, but there's a lot of strategy here. Like, do you parachute in? Do you try and jump in so that you can have a vehicle ready? There's also a lot of strategy here if you do this with other people. Maybe one person goes and gets the hypothetical objective. The other person is, you know, the escape route. Then maybe they come in a little bit later with a helicopter. So there's a lot of fun things you can do trying to invade the military base at Fort Zancudo in GTA Online. And last but not least, at the number 10 spot today, try and stop the train. Now, I'm not talking about like the single player mod videos that you've probably seen online. Uh, I'm literally talking about try and have fun seeing if you can actually stop the train in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, there's no real way to do that, but you can sure have a lot of fun. What you want to do is basically pick an area of the map where the train goes through like a tight checkpoint. 
There's a tunnel located in Sandy Shores that's perfect for this where you can basically just stack up cars and you can create this massive explosion. It, I'm pretty sure it almost broke my game. Uh, the amount of frames I had was probably like in the single digits, but it was so much fun just trying to stop that giant train. It's like a big project that ultimately leads up to a crushing finale. It's so much fun to see happen, and if you can get a group of friends together, uh, it's something that I definitely recommend that you ultimately try. But anyways, that right there is 10 things that you can do if you're bored in Grand Theft Auto Online that nobody else has really ever done. Again, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Do you have any other suggestions or ideas that you could do if you were bored? And if you would like to see a part two of this video or just more things to do, again, let us know in the comments down below and be sure to leave a like rating on this video. That would be awesome. And also make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new, if you wanna stay up to date on all the latest GTA and Red Dead Redemption videos that we're doing here on the channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.